ゴブゾーはシオンソン狙いなんすよ<笑>すごいっすだからあんたみたいな小娘を払おうとするわけがないっすよ<笑>はい。Milim, like looking with her eyes at something.、Uh, I don't know. So it's like, yeah, trouble is coming to Tempest. And apparently, this is the prelude to it. So, before we get into this episode, if you guys have my reaction, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and、uh, please consider supporting my Patreon. I appreciate that. And now let's start this episode. And here we go. Okay, guys, in case the reaction gets blocked and I had to cut out the reaction itself, you can just look in the pinned comment in the comment section where for the link to the reaction highlight itself. So you can just click on it, watch it, and then you just come back for my review. Muran? It can't be Muran, right? She doesn't have long hair. Does she have long, does she have long hair? It is her. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't think she has long hair.、Uh, she's a witch. She's imagine.、Uh, I can't wait. Aren't witches also human? I don't know. <laughs> I knew something was going to happen between these two. You <laughs> see your heart beating.、Uh, she doesn't have her heart. I forgot. Yeah. Can someone return her heart to her so she can make her own decisions and stuff? Like, if, if the fact that she he has her heart, does that mean that she can never say no to whatever it is that he asks? Or it's like, if I have your heart and then I squeeze it, I'm remembering.、Oh. Uh, what was that show? Oh, about the fairy tales and stuff. Uh, you know, the one with Emma Swan, and、uh, I'll figure it out all later. Like, they will, like, stuck you, their hand through you, like, pull out your heart, and if they squeeze it and destroy it, then you die. Is that basically what's going on with her? It must be, right? <laughs> I don't know what Shaq was. I don't know what Shaq was. Like, each time they say, it's Tana. I always, my mom always goes to. Is that the brand new that he had? I'm like, oh. He always reminds me of that. <laughs> you see? That part. I, mean, this, I love this outfit on you. <laughs> Don't grow up. These are the high potions. Did you notice something? Aniki? The information? I just might, right. Why would you ever believe that he's gonna release you? He's never gonna release you.
これは罠決まってるわね夢が叶うのなら<笑>私は悪魔にだって魂を売るでしょう Nothing is worth setting your soul for. I'm about to say, where is, where is it? What? Is that transmission true? Or is it a fake thing? What? Of course it is. You come to their turf, provoke them, and you expect them not to hurt you? Are you freaking kidding me? ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、
Several. <sighs> Your eye is not more powerful than Milam. Hinata? Like Sagakuchi? Does he know? She's the one behind it. I don't know. To keep him from going there. ま、<笑> まさか死ぬ気なのか。だが、なぜやっぱりそうなんだな。お前が死を覚悟してまで従うってことはその話。どう。詳しく聞かせろよ。俺が守ってやる。バカなの。この姿を見たらわかるでしょ。私は魔人
like gobzo gobzo does sort of like this like I, it's not like we spend so like a lot of time with him or anything but like just based on the fact that when she on no she on, was she on Oshuna? i don't know one of those two as them where they were while they were in gazelle dragos kingdom dragon and they, he immediately said that they were at the you know elf paradise place i'm like this this kid has no malicious bone in his body so like he touched you and apparently her skill is that she affects your brain waves and it makes you do whatever it is that she wants you to do basically sort of like mind control and when she was saying all those things about gobzo the people there started to believe it because of her skill but then well first off Gopta shows up when I heard his voice I was like so excited I was so happy I'm like I have never been so happy to see you and he just got there and he was like apologize or whatever and basically told Gobzo that he believed him and then she was getting more upset because he was like so what is he saying that I'm lying of course you're lying getting more upset because Gopta did not at all believe what she was saying she was all he was all in with Gobzo. Started telling people like because like the, the, the all of them know that he likes Chiyo. So of course he's not gonna look at that frail little thing over there. And of course that pissed her more off even more. And then it came to a point where she's like, eh, I'm so tired of you guys. You guys should just die. And I'm like, so you just come into these people's town and we're gonna try to kill everybody. But nothing was happening so i'm like okay why is nothing happening and then i heard shona's voice <laughs> she just shows up with shiona like i was so excited when i saw her and she's the one that canceled out whatever it is she was trying to do ah <sighs> that was so good and then um the the, the dude shogo whatever was like okay uh, well, uh, no at first Shuna told them that they are not welcome and that they should leave but then they didn't want to leave and of course she was like okay i'm gonna fight you and then that's when she like dropped her sword and it's like okay we're gonna fight and then we will uh, that the uh, third one also um was like okay was facing i think he was about to face gopta and gopso uh, gopta told gopso to protect the princess and um he was took out some some a sword or something and the severer and he mentioned hinata in passing why okay and that was basically like we didn't actually see the fight happening it was only toward the end there when um clearly shogo whatever his name was was not making headway with shion until they brought the dome or whatever and then you know her strength was being sapped and then he's like oh you know is something wrong and i was i don't quite remember what he said but basically he, he was now feeling proud because Shion was feeling weaker and i'm like so uh you don't you're not man enough to face her at full strength and now that she's losing her her uh strength you're like hey nah nah i'm like whatever you suck all of them suck. They need to get out. Now, they started this episode with um, Yom and Muran. You know, they were under the tree. He had his head on her lap and everything. And I don't know why. I, like, I was seeing her. I'm like, that's Muran, right? But does Muran have long hair? I don't quite remember why I thought she didn't have long hair. But either way, um, you can clearly tell that there's something going on between them two and that they were developed feelings for each other and whatnot and in this particular episode he clearly out loud said it that i love you and okay so that happened she was walking around and then she receives a message from um carrie no carrie um clement contacted her and it's like okay, okay basically thanking her for all the information that he gave him or and something or other like that and then um it was like okay that i have one more thing for you to do and then i'll let you go i'm like girl she's he's never gonna let you go okay 
And then he's like, okay, just lay low for a while and then I'm going to tell you what to do. And what he told her was to make Tempest an entire magic um, nation or something. Like basically remove magic from their world or something or other like that. And doing that would um, cut off communication, I guess, with the outside world. Meaning removal. Because um, Soe was... They were having a meeting and so I was telling them that the people from Falmouth were coming and they're like, okay, maybe we should contact Rimuru like right now. But before they could contact Rimuru, uh, Albis from the um, Razenia, yeah, Albis, um, contacted them and then they're like, uh, we want you to take in some refugees because we're about to go to war with Milim. I'm like, what? What is going on? Why is Milim attacking Carrion? I don't get it. So that happened. So when, after um, Muran received her orders to make the, the nation into magic and then she was living in Wana and then you had um, Grucius following her and I'm like, okay, does he know what she's, she was about to do? Or something or other like that. And then he told her that he received this message from um who? I don't know. But basically the message telling him that Milim was attacking, was about to attack um their kingdom, their nation. And then um Muran was like, so this is why Clement is so in such a hurry. I'm like, why? I don't get it. Why is whatever is pushing Milam to attack Carrion? Why does that make Clement wanna do this with Tempest? I I don't know, but clearly she has some some idea. And then um, as her and uh, Grucius was talking about basically her being, I think, be under control of Clem Clement and all of that. And then Yum shows up and Yum is like, I'm going to protect you. And I'm like, okay, that's exactly what, she, that's what she's also thinking she's doing, protecting him. And I'm, okay, he revealed that he loved her, um, hugged her. And then Grucius was getting jealous one night and then they started you know a little scuffle or whatever and then Muran is in the background she's like thank you and then she started ah! and I'm like okay what is she doing I had two things going through my mind like I was flipping back and forth in my mind about what she was doing the one thing I was thinking I'm like she's killing herself because I'm thinking okay um Yum just told her that he loved her. Um, he doesn't want to do anything that's going to hurt Yum or, you know, Tempest. So if I'm not under Clement's control, if I'm taking my, myself out of the equation, then, you know, Tempest can protect themselves or something or other like that. That's what I'm, I was, that's one part of what I was thinking. And then the other part is that she's actually doing what, Clement wanted her to do and what made me like when, as, like I said I was flip flopping but I was more thinking that she's doing what Clement was do, was telling her because at one point you see Grucius sort of like taking out a knife like she was about to attack Muran or something like he was debating whether to attack her or something so I'm like okay if she was killing herself then why would he need a knife? So if he needs a knife, then that means that he's trying to stop her from doing what she's, you know. She enacted the thing, and then you had the Falmouth people, the, the church people, whatever, out there enacting a dome around Rimuru. Rimuru. Tempest. Yeah. Well, no, Rimuru is the capital city. A uh, Tempest. All over Tempest. And after that happened, that's when she started feeling weak. And I'm like, huh, oh, freaking frack. I don't like this. 
Um, what else happened? Yeah, I can't think of anything else that might have happened this episode. I might, like my main thing is why is Milim attacking Carrion? Like it doesn't make any sense. Or at one point in the episode when Grucius and uh, um, Muran were talking, I, I was like under the impression that maybe Muran is the one that sort of like faked that um, call from Albus, you know. But no, based on what she said after that, I'm like, no, that, that wasn't her. So it was actually a communication from the real Albus. And there's a war between those two, like Carrion and uh, Melim, that's coming. Like last we saw of Melim, she was in uh, with Clemen. So I don't know what happened between them two that's now pushing Melim to go and attack Carrion. Like, I don't know. Is it because Carrion and uh, um, Rimuru also have uh, an. Uh, A treaty of some kind that she not like that that another demon lord will be associated with Rimuru but I, I don't see that as being the reason maybe Clement lied to her made her think something or other but you know she can be a little gullible so it's like it wouldn't surprise me if Clement you know made stuff up to make her attack Carrion, but I don't know, I guess we'll see. Thank you guys for watching, and if you like this reaction, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you want to see my reaction to the next episode, the link is going to be in the pinned comment, in the comment section, so just click on it and check it out, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Only God can judge, you want to deceive me, you won't play with my heart, you don't see me foolish, only God.